The Lord is my shepherd. David starts out this passage of scripture with a very weighty statement. If you I guess if you've been in the church or haven't been in the church, you probably know this scripture. You've heard it. It's been said probably in all different kinds of capacities, but um, we, we talked about it last week. We've t- talked about it before, but this week um, we are jumping into part two, and I really want us to focus on this word that the Lord is my shepherd. Now, this wasn't just another, another name that David was calling God. It wasn't just a flippant statement that he was making about him. David knew from personal experience all about being a shepherd. He knew what the role and the responsibility of the shepherd was in the life of sheep. And every verse in this chapter, when looked at through that lens, the lens of the shepherd, and as a sheep, it takes on a whole new meaning. The shepherd literally does everything for the sheep. Sheep are helpless. They're not the smartest animals that God ever created. They lack direction. They lack wisdom. They lack security. They lack peace. They rely on the shepherd for everything. And a good shepherd knows that in order to have the best flock, he needs to make sure that all of their needs are met so that they can produce and live life to their full potential. Jesus says in John chapter 10 that he is the good shepherd. He's not a so-so shepherd. He's not a status quo shepherd. He's not the shepherd, but he is the good shepherd. And so this morning, the big idea, right, the take-home thought that I want us to walk away with is this truth that the good shepherd can be trusted. And we'll unpack that a little bit today and understand it more fully as we look at these verses. But the first point today is that he provides all that I need. We said last week that another name for God is Jehovah Jireh, which means my provider. But going further than that, when you break down that name, it's not superficial, right? It's not God gives me what I need, but God knows my need. God fills my need along with me. God sees it. God experiences it. He is personal with us. He's personal with our needs, and he provides for them. He provides from the greatest to the smallest of our needs, church. Food, finances, family, health, relationship, salvation, eternity, right? He knows what we need even before we speak the need out. And in fact, he says this in Matthew chapter 6. He says, don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. Lamentations 3.22 I love these verses. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin fresh each morning. And I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is all that I need. All that we have need of can be found in seeking him. It can, you know, the sheep don't go looking any, to anyone else to fulfill their needs. They, they go to their shepherd. And I think it's significant that David starts off this psalm with these words because it sets up every other verse in this passage. He breaks down what all means. But with the very first verse, we understand so much about the good shepherd about who God is. The Lord is my shepherd with him, in him, because of him, through him, I have all that I need. The second point is this, that the good shepherd gives me rest. 
Sheep cannot sleep if there are disturbances around them. They cannot rest without completely peaceful conditions. They can't be hungry. There can't be tension in the flock. There can't be predators or pests um, bothering them. They literally have to be free from fear in order to rest. And so the shepherd has to make sure that there's no infighting you know, there's, there's no tension amongst the flock. He has to make sure to lead them to places where there aren't pesky bugs. And, you know, he has to put special th- oils on them and, and to keep the bugs from bothering them. And he's the only one that can bring peace to their situation. His presence in the life of the sheep brings them peace. And the same thing with us, the, the presence of the good shepherd in our life brings us peace. It gives us rest. He can calm the stormiest of hearts. His word says that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And having a sound mind, church, it means that we are free from living in fear. Life is full of unknowns, right? The bottom could fall out at any minute. There's so many things out of our control, But the shepherd is always in control. He is always at his post. He is always walking amongst his sheep. He's always seeing, knowing, watching, experiencing. He knows what's going on in his presence in our lives. In our situations is what brings peace to our heart. It's what gives us rest. Literally having the shepherd walk amongst the sheep and them hearing his voice will calm them down. Because the voice of the Lord is powerful. Psalm 29 tells us that. His voice can calm the winds and the waves. His, his, his voice is so powerful, it can break the cedars, it says. It can bring the dead things to life. So in tumultuous situations, in not peaceful situations, in chaotic situations, we can be at rest. Even if the winds and the waves are crashing all around us, right? Our, we feel like our boat is blowing all over the place. Because we have the presence of the good shepherd in our life, we can be at rest. We can be at peace. We can rest. Matthew 28, 20, the last part of the verse, Jesus says, and be sure of this, I am with you always. I'm with you always. He has not left us alone. He is with us. Number three, the good shepherd guides me along the right paths. The good shepherd church, he leads us with wisdom and with foresight. His timing is always right. If you look at the areas that David would have actually been talking about in this passage, when he says things, um, he, you know, he guides me along the right paths. When it says he lets, he lets me rest in green, me- in green meadows, he leads me beside peaceful streams. The areas that David would have been talking about, the areas that he literally experienced um, as he led his sheep, it wasn't easy terrain. It wasn't pretty lush green grasses. The area in Palestine that he was a shepherd in, it was rough terrain. It was brown. It was patchy. It was dry. And in order to get lush green pastures, a lot of work had to be done. Rocks had to be picked up, stumps had to be dug up, right? Plowing and planting and watering. A lot of time and energy was spent in order to make sure that the ground could produce what it needed to. I don't know if you've ever put a yard in before. When we moved into our house a few years ago, we, there was nothing there. There was no yard. And we spent a summer putting a yard in. And that's a full-time job. I don't know if you've done that before, but I think it took forever to pick up all the rocks, you know, especially because we had our kids helping us pick up all the rocks, right? So we had the big buckets out there, you know, picking up all the rocks. And then after you pick up all the rocks, you know, you got to get the ground ready, and then you got to plant, then you got to water, then you got to water, then you got to water, then you got to water and water. That's like the never-ending thing, the watering, 
right? You got to fertilize. You got to do something every single year before, you know, then you got to mow it. Then you got to rake it. Then you got to, you know, fertilize again. You got your, your autumn fertilizer, your spring, you know, you got all these things you got to do. It's a constant thing. And when we think about being guided along the right paths, it doesn't mean the path of least resistance. It doesn't mean the easiest path. It doesn't mean that we didn't get the green grasses the easiest way. It doesn't mean that we just go up one side and down the other. The paths that David would have led his sheep through are ones that literally zigzag up a mountainside. Up and down, up and down, up and down the mountain, back and forth, back and forth. But this was the safest route. It was the wisest route. It was the route that that was most traveled. It wasn't the quickest route. The view wasn't always the best. Sometimes it was the same view over and over and over again, right? Why couldn't we have just gone up the mountain and gone down the mountain? But church, we can always trust that the shepherd will lead us the wisest way. Because he's intentional. He's not going to lead us through something that he cannot use for our glory and our good. And sometimes that means picking up a lot of rocks, spending a lot of time raking up things, right? I don't know if you've ever noticed, maybe it's just our yard. I don't think it's just our yard, but um, that the most lush and full and greenest part of the yard, if you live in North Pole, is probably over your septic tank. The place with the most poop is the place that's greenest. And I don't think that's a coincidence because sometimes the best part of our lives, the best part of our testimonies are the ones with the most poop in them. It's the ones that we've struggled the most. It's the ones that just have a lot of junk, a lot of stuff. We've walked through a lot of things. But that's the place that's the greenest Those are the places that we've come out on the other side and we've seen where God has led us. We've seen his intentionality. We've seen where, he, where the zigzag has made sense. Where why couldn't we have gone the easiest route? But now we see it wasn't for nothing. Lush green pastures make the best sheep. If sheep are hungry, they will not rest. They literally will get up and constantly pace and pace and try to find something to satisfy their hunger. If they're not content, they're not restful, they're anxious, they lose weight, they don't do what they're supposed to do. But a good shepherd will lead his sheep to the right pasture so they can eat, they can be satisfied, and then they can lay down and grow and get full and thrive but we have to trust the leading of the shepherd in in order to find our place of rest, in order to find our place of peace, our place of refuge, our place of growth, our growth. We need to trust that he has our best interest at heart. And church, we're filled through his word, right? We're filled through his presence. We're filled through our reliance on him. We're, We're filled when we allow the truth of his word to take root in our heart. We're filled when we let him remove things in us that don't honor him. We're filled when we take time to draw near and let let him fill us up with more of himself. St. Augustine of, of Africa, he said this. He said, Oh God, thou hast made us for thyself, and our souls are restless, searching till they find their rest in thee. We're like those hungry sheep, pacing and pacing, looking for something to satisfy until we find our rest in him. Number four is that the good shepherd is with us through the highs and the lows of life. The presence of the shepherd in our lives through the good times and the bad times, church, it makes all the difference. Whether we are on the mountaintop and everything is going great or we are in the valley, his presence should bring peace to our hearts because he's in the valley with us, because he's on the mountain with us. And I, like we said already before that the good shepherd leads us with intentionality. That means he does things on purpose. Where he leads us, he does it on purpose. 
not by accident, not by chance. We are never left to flounder. We're never left to sink. He knows when the storms of life are coming. He knows when, when we need to go down to the valley and drink and be refilled. And he knows when we can't go down there. He's not going to lead us. A good shepherd's not going to lead his, his sheep down in the valley when the storms are coming and the sheep are going to drown. He's not going to do that. We have to trust the leading and the timing of the shepherd. We might be thirsty. We might think it's time for us to get to that place. But he says no because there's things coming that can hurt us, that can drown us, that can get us stuck. And that's not what he wants to do. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Without the presence of light, there's no shadow. So you might be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but the light of the world is with you. It says, I will fear no evil because you are with me. We go through the valley, church. We don't stay in the valley. We don't get stuck in the valley. We don't die in the valley. We don't lay down in the valley. We go through the valley because he leads us. And from the valley, we move to higher ground. We get to come up to the mountain. And again, the good shepherd uses the valley times to grow our trust in him, to grow our reliability in him. His leading and his guiding of us, church, it it does something in our hearts. We grow in those times. Our intimacy gets deeper. I shared a few, a few weeks ago, uh, Elizabeth Elliot, missionary Elizabeth Elliot, she says that suffering is never for nothing. She said, our suffering, it's in those times of suffering that I've been the most intimate with God. Our relationship with the shepherd can flourish in the valley, and as he leads us to the mountaintop, as he leads us to higher ground, we can see new, we can see things with new vision, with renewed strength, with hope, with peace, with refreshment. We can be refreshed in the valley. I love Jeremiah 17, 5 through 8. It's in your notes. I think it says, this is what the Lord says. It says, cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land. But listen. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and their confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. In every situation... We can be like trees planted along the riverbank when we put our trust, our hope, and our confidence in the shepherd. The fifth one is this, his goodness and his mercy pursue me. W. Philip Keller, author, he says this, he says, how many Christians feel this way about Christ? How many of us are truly concerned that no matter what occurs in our lives, we are being followed by goodness and by mercy? This is another ultimate show of the trust in the shepherd. Do we believe this church? Do we believe that we are being pursued by his goodness, his mercy, his unfailing love all the days of our lives? Again, Lamentations 3, the faithful love of the Lord, it never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies are new every single morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. The Lord is my reward. The Lord is all that I have need of. Therefore, I will hope. Therefore, I will trust in him. His goodness and his mercy, it follows us because he loves us. 
and he will always do the right thing for us, church. He will always do the best thing for us. But do we trust and rely on this goodness and mercy? We don't deserve the goodness and the mercy of God, do we? We've done nothing to achieve it. But because of his love for us, his great love for us, he extends his goodness and his mercy. Because he's great, because his works are marvelous, because they're too wonderful, the word says, for me to describe Psalm 92. I love it. It says, it's good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to the Most High. It's good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening. Do we do that? Do we stop and declare the goodness of God in the morning? Do we go to bed at night and declare his faithfulness? God, you've been faithful this day. Lord, I see these places that you've been at work in my life. I thank you for your goodness. It says, it, it, continuing on, verse 4, you thrill me, Lord, with all that you have done for me. Literally, my heart jumps for joy at what you have done, what great works you do, and how deep are your thoughts. Church, he is good, and he loves us. He is a good shepherd. Because he first loved us, we love him. And he makes his mercy and his love and his goodness follow after us. But church, he also wants us to be carriers of that. He doesn't just want us to hoard his goodness and mercy, but he wants us to carry his goodness and mercy as we walk through life. Right? We've said this a thousand times. What God does in us, he wants to do through us. So we say, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. We rely on our shepherd for everything. When Jesus declares, I am the good shepherd, he's declaring to us that he can be trusted to be our everything, to be our defender, to be our provider, to be our healer, to be our peace, to be our salvation. And no matter what we may encounter in this life, what we're even encountering right now, whether it's mountains or valleys, highs, lows, green pastures, rocky ground, the fact that the good shepherd is with us, leading us is something that we can take comfort in. It's something that we can rest in. We can take comfort knowing that he can handle all the terrain that is ahead even, and he can lead us over all of it. And we can have confidence in his leading. The good shepherd provides for us and we can declare, I have everything that I need. The Lord is my portion. His love never ends. His mercies never cease. His faithfulness is great. We can trust that he has it all under control, church. And so I don't know where you are today. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I, I just, uh, I want you to get this today, that the Lord is my shepherd and he can be trusted. You don't have to be going through anything, but you need to know that the Lord is your shepherd and he can be trusted. Tomorrow you may start going through something and you need to know that the Lord is your shepherd and he can be trusted and you just need to let him lead you. You need to let him guide you. You need to walk through the zigzag and the, in the valleys and the up and the down and all of that. Trust that he knows. Trust that he's got it under control. I'm going to ask you to stand with me and have our staff come. We want to pray with you this morning, but as we do, I want to, I want to close this out with, before we jump into prayer, I want to read to you Psalm 23 out of the message. And it says this, 
It says, God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. And you know, as I studied and read about, about sheep and about shepherds, it's this whole journey that they go on every year. They start in, you know, at home and, and as the seasons change and they have to go find green pastures and other places, they have to make the journey. And as they go and they find the green pastures, they, they stay, you know, they, the shepherd is leading them. He's leading them ahead of, of the weather, and he's bedding them down when they need to be in, in a safe place when the weather hits. But, you know, they're going to make it back. And eventually they make it back home where they need to be, and they get to dwell in, in the place, in their home. And that's what he does with us, church. We're on this journey with him but we can trust him to lead us and to guide us every step of the way and eventually he'll bring us back home to be with him that's the plan that's the purpose that's our blessed hope there's an end goal and so this morning we want to pray with you we want to pray with you for provision we want to pray with you for guidance, and we want to pray for you for the goodness of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I'm reminded of uh, something that we looked at last week in Genesis chapter 22. Remember, we talked about Abraham, and Abraham was in that place where he needed God's provision in his life. It says in verse 14 it says that Abraham called the place that he was at the Lord will provide now, here, here's what we know about the provision of God the Bible says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you did you hear what I said seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added. What shall be added? Well, it's the blessings of God. It's the, it's the provision of God's promise in our life. It's the, it's the promise of health. It's the promise of, 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 of life and life forevermore. But it's also the promises of God where it says if we cast our care upon him, he cares for us. And he helps us. And, you know, I know, I know we're in like a situation where a lot, this is heavy on our hearts because a lot of us are, are, are seeing what's happening around us in, in our economy and we're feeling the stretch. We're feeling the, the, the weight of cost of living going up, expenses going up. I want to tell you this morning, God provides. He, he's a God of provision. And it says that if we seek him first, things are added. Praise God. He, he takes care of us. I just want to pray over you today, and I just want you to stretch out your hand. I don't know uh, exactly what you're you're going through this morning. Maybe you need you need health, and you need life in your body. Maybe you need a miracle in in your body. You need God to do something uh, on the inside of you physically. Maybe today you're just at a place where where uh, you need the Lord to help you with your finances because you're not sure how you're going to pay the bills next week or the week after, and you're worried about the cost of living going up. Maybe today you're in a place to where you just, you need the touch of the Holy Spirit to come and bring you peace and, and let you know, I've got this. I've got you. I'm with you. I want to pray over you today. So Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your church. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the examples that we have in Scripture that shows that you you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the provider that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus is what the word of God says. 
And so, God, today that's our heart as we, as, as we understand that the shepherd brings provision. The, the Bible says, I shall not lack. God, we understand that it's those uh, that are in Christ Jesus. It's those that seek first the kingdom of God. It's, it's those that understand that the Lord is there. The Lord is the provider, the helper, the shepherd, the one that can, can see us through. And God, as we, as we honor the promises of God and we obey the word of God, I pray, Lord Jesus, just for, for provision in people's life. Lord, provision in relationships. Provision, God, in, in finances. Lord, provision, uh, Lord, in the area of, of, of needing physical health and healing inside of our body. We know, Lord Jesus, that you are the Lord of all. And God, today we stand on your word that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. I just want you to reach your hands out to heaven today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. God, we thank you for the blessings of God in our life. And Lord, today, we, you know what we just say? Lord, we receive the blessings of God. We receive the provision of the Lord. We thank you that you've provided everlasting life. We thank you, God, that your promise says that, that you bore our grief, sicknesses, and diseases, and by your stripes we are healed. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you understand that as we go through life, we have needs and we have situations and we need help. We thank you, God, that you are Jehovah Jireh, the provider. Just receive the blessings of God today. Just receive them today. Claim them today in your heart and in your life. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you love us. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your truth. God, you are mighty to save. You are powerful. You are the Lord. The Lord, our shepherd. God, we give you praise this morning. Lord Jesus, we Thank you that you guide us. That you guide us by your, your word says, even that your rod and your staff, they comfort us. And Lord, you, you, you walk life with us. You know what's ahead. You know what's behind. You know what's coming next. You know the best route that we need to take. And Lord, I pray today for those here that they just need guidance from you. Lord, they need <clears throat> clarity. They need wisdom. Lord, whether it's, it's physical, whether it is um, financial, whether it's relational, God, wh whatever the situation is, it's for family. Lord Jesus, there's some heavy needs represented in this place today. Some big questions that people need answers to, that your church, that your sheep, your children need answers to. And Lord, there might be some this morning that are questioning, why are we walking this way? Do you know where you're leading us? How did we get here? What's going on? Lord, I pray today that we would have trust in you, our shepherd, to lead us. And that not only that we would trust, but we would trust your timing. We wouldn't just trust the way that you're going, but we would trust your timing. You know when we need to go. You know when things need to move. You know how they need to happen. Lord, trust is hard. And it's scary because it's out of our control. But Lord, we want to be a church that puts our faith into action. Lord, we want to, to walk the way that you're going. We want to 100% to, to fall in line behind you. And so, Lord Jesus, today, if there are those in this place or online that they just need wisdom, Lord, your word says if we need wisdom to ask and you generously give it to us. So we are asking today, 
Lord, we're asking for wisdom for jobs. We're asking for wisdom for our finances. We're asking for wisdom for our health. God, we're asking wisdom for our future. We're asking wisdom, God, in, in everything from schools to spouses to, to jobs. Lord, all of these things, God, we're asking wisdom. Lord, you know the answers and we trust you. And Lord, we don't see things moving all the time as fast as we want them to or the way we want them to, but we trust you. We trust you and we trust your timing because you don't lead us through things where we're gonna die and drown and get lost and get stuck. You lead us through. You take us from the valley to the higher ground. And Lord Jesus, I'm praying that in this situation, that Lord, our intimacy with you would grow. Our reliance on you would grow. Lord, that we would declare that you are our shepherd and we have all that we need. That you lead us and you guide us. And we trust your timing. I love what Pastor Aubrey said this morning about um, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death and the fact that there would be no shadow if the light wasn't present. Even in the valley, I don't know everything that you guys are going through. I know some of what you guys are going through, but even in the valley, no matter how dark it seems, his light is still present. Lord, we thank you this morning that your goodness and mercy pursue us. We thank you that not only is it provided for us, but that you pursue us. That not only do we walk through the valley sometimes, Lord, but that when we do, you are there. Your light is there. Your rod and your staff, you comfort us. And your light is ever present with us as you pursue us. So, Lord, I ask this morning that you would help turn our hearts and turn our minds to actively recognize your goodness and your mercy that are pursuing us. Lord, that as we look behind us, we can see all of the ways, God, that you have shown up, all of the ways that your goodness and your mercy and your staff have pursued us. So that, God, when we turn to look ahead, we don't do so in fear. We don't do so with uncertainty, but we do so knowing that your rod and your staff, not only do they lead us, but they pursue your mercy, your goodness pursues each and every one of us. Lord, I thank you that there is nowhere that we can go to get away from your mercy and your goodness. I feel like there's some of you that need to be reminded this morning, even if you feel like you've screwed up, you've messed up. You know what, God did have a plan for me, but I messed it up. I have really great news for you this morning because God, he has purpose for you and a thousand different plans to get you there. So at any moment that you say, Lord, I am ready to live for your purpose, I recognize that your goodness and mercy have been pursuing me and I want to walk in your goodness and mercy. I want to live to the purpose that you have created me to. He has another plan and another plan and another plan and another plan to get you there. There is nothing that you have done that he cannot redeem. There is nothing, absolutely nothing that is outside of his management, outside of his being able to handle, outside of his grace and mercy and his goodness that are constantly pursuing you. So this morning, if that's you, I want you to just take a minute and let him know, Lord, okay, if you've got another plan to get me there, I wanna live 
to the purpose that you have created me to do. Just take a minute and tell him it doesn't take some specific prayer. There's no um, specific ingredients that you need to get there. It just takes a willing heart and obedient feet. So Lord, this morning we say we want to live your way, your purpose. So God, I recognize that your goodness, your mercy, your grace, they pursue me and I'm gonna pursue you back with the same fervency, the same fire, the same tenacity that you chase after me. I want to chase after you. I want to chase after the things that you have for me. I don't want to be stagnant. I don't want to just settle for ordinary or so-so. Oh, I've read my Bible. I'm doing okay. God, we want to pursue you. More of you. More of you. Church, it's time for things to be done a little differently. Whatever you've done in the past, seek him more. Seek him more. Press in more. Don't settle. Don't settle for where you've at. Inaction is action. Actively pursue him the same way his goodness and mercy are actively pursuing you. Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. That God, that though sometimes we haven't actively pursued you the way that we should, that you have continued to actively pursue us. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We praise you and we bless your name this morning. Church, would you raise your hands this morning? I wanna play a blessing over you before I release you. Lord, I ask that each and every person under the sound of my voice would go this week and live knowing that your goodness and mercy pursue them, that they would live in constant pursuit of you, more of you, and not just in pursuit of you, but also knowing that they have this goodness and mercy to share with those around them. I pray that that would be ever present on their minds, that your goodness and mercy pursues them, is with them, and is theirs to share. God, open their mouths. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and your heart to respond to those around us. We know that there is a hurting world around us, a hurting community around us, and you are the answer. So God, as we go this week, empower us, embolden us to share your goodness and your mercy. I pray that you would bless them and keep them, that your face would shine upon them, that you would be gracious to them and grant them peace as the good shepherd that you are. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to remind you guys again. Good morning, MPAG Online. This is Nate. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And hey, we love our church, and I just want to remind you there are a couple different ways you can give. You can give online at northpoleag.org, or you can go to the About page on our YouTube channel where there's a link to give. Uh, I'm praying for you. We love you. Uh, be blessed and have a great day.